In this example, we're going to look at how to analyze business transactions and see how they impact our accounting equation. In part two, I'll actually show you how we use that accounting equation information to put together our three financial statements. So in this problem, they tell us that on July 1st of 2019, our owner established Half Moon Realty, and they've completed the following transactions during the month of July. So we're going to look at each one of those transactions, and we're going to see how it affects our accounting equation. So again, always make sure you're reading that additional information at the top. It does tell us that we have to enter in either a plus or minus sign to show the transaction effect on the account. Also, I want to point out, you'll see here that we have a sales commission. This is our revenue account. Remember, every company titles their revenues something different based on the type of business that they are. So it doesn't always have to be fees earned. It can be sales commission. It could be rent revenue. It could be sales. In this case, they are a real estate company. So when they sell a home, they're earning a commission on that sale that they did. So our sales commission is our revenue account here. You can always tell that it's your revenue account because it's after your drawing account, but before your first expense account. So we're going to look at each transaction and we're going to analyze each transaction. So they tell us that the business opened a business bank account with a deposit of $20,000 from personal funds. So we're always looking at it from the business's point of view. So what the business is receiving is an increase in cash of $20,000. The reason why the business is receiving cash is because our owner invested that $20,000 into the business. So both our cash is increasing and our capital is increasing. So our assets are going up and in total our liabilities and equity are increasing as well on the right hand side. In B, it says we paid rent on office and equipment for the month. So anytime you see the word paid, we pay everything in cash. So when you're reading these transactions, really look for some buzzwords. Look for things like paid. Look for things that might already have an account name listed. That's really going to help you when you're analyzing these business transactions when you're first getting started. So we're paying something out, and what we're paying out is cash, and we're spending $3,200 on rent, and we're renting our office and equipment for the month. So our cash is decreasing by $3,200, and what we are spending money on is we're spending it on the rent of two different items. So rent, our expenses have a negative effect on owner's equity. It brings down the value of owner's equity. So we put in that $3,200. The next thing that they want you to do is to calculate an updated balance. So we're gonna update our balances. So currently we now have $16,800 in cash, zero in supplies, nothing in accounts payable, 20,000 in our capital, and $3,200 in our rent. In transaction C, it says we paid, so there's that buzzword again, we know cash is gonna be involved and it's gonna be decreasing, and we paid an automobile expense for the month of $1,450 and a miscellaneous expense of 700. So paid, we know, involves cash, and there's two account names listed here automobile expense and miscellaneous expense. So in this transaction, three accounts are going to be involved. In every transaction, at least two accounts have to be involved, but three or four or five accounts can be involved as well. So our cash, once again, is decreasing, and we're gonna decrease it by the total amount that we're paying for those two separate um, expenses that we have. So in total, $2,150 is coming out of cash. They told us that $1,450 is for automobile expense, $700 is for our miscellaneous expense. So we come over to our automobile expense. Again, we put in that minus sign since our expenses have a negative impact on our owner's equity. And we have $1,450 for auto and we scroll over to our miscellaneous 
and again, minus sign for that 700. We still balance on the right-hand side of our accounting equation, which is our liabilities and owner's equity. In total, we've reduced it by that 2,150. And on the left-hand side in our assets, we've reduced it as well. So we need to do another balance. So after paying those two expenses, we now have $14,650 in cash. Still have $20,000 in capital. 3200 in rent. We now have 1450 in automobile expense and 700 in miscellaneous. In transaction D, it says we've purchased office supplies and here is a key phrase on account. Anytime you see the phrase on account, that means you're either dealing with an accounts receivable or an accounts payable. An easy way for you to figure that out. So account is our last word here. Purchased is the first one. So if it's an account that starts with a P, that means it's accounts payable that we're dealing with. We're going into a store, we're getting our office supplies of $1,350 and we're basically using our credit card. We're charging that. So for transaction D, under our supplies, we're increasing our supplies by the $1,350, and we're also increasing our liabilities. It's increasing because we owe more money to someone else sometime in the future. So we update our balances. Nothing has happened to our cash value from this transaction because we did that um, transaction on account. Our supplies are now at $1,350, as is our accounts payable. Capital is still at $20, $3,200 for rent, $1,450 for auto, and $700 for miscellaneous. In transaction E, it says we earned sales commissions receiving cash of $20,600. So again, reading that transaction very carefully, we see the two accounts that are going to be affected. We see the account name cash, and we see the account name sales commissions. Remember, sales commissions is our new revenue account. Revenue represents what we've earned for providing services to our customers, so we're earning that sales commission. So in our cash, we're increasing our cash because we're receiving that money by 20,600. And our sales commission has increased by 20,000. $600. So we update our balances yet again. We now have $35,250 in cash. Our supplies and our accounts payable and our capital have remained the same. We now have $20,600 in our revenue and we have our expenses that we have incurred so far. In transaction F, it tells us that we've paid a creditor on account. So again, some buzzwords that are here. Paid, we know we pay everybody in cash. And that phrase, on account. So on account, last word is account, first word is paid. It's accounts payable that's being affected. We are now paying down some of our debt that we have. So our cash is going to decrease by 750000 as is our accounts payable. Think about making a payment to your credit card. You now owe less money to your credit card company when you make a payment. So our updated balances, we have 34,500 in cash. We still own 1,350 in supplies, that hasn't changed, but now our liability has dropped to only $600. 20,000 in capital, 20,600 in revenues, 3,200 in rent, 1,450 in auto, and 700 in miscellaneous. In G, it says we paid office salaries for 2,600. We know we pay everything in cash. Office salaries, salaries get paid to our employees. Our employees are an expense to our business. They're helping us run and operate our company. So when we look at it, we have a minus $2,600 for our supplies, our salaries rather, and we have our salaries expense of 2,600. 
we can now update our balances again. So we now have $31,900 in cash. And we've now added another value to our expenses. In transaction H, withdrew cash for personal use. So we know cash is involved and we're withdrawing it from the business, so that means that we're gonna have less of it. And when they do a withdrawal, our owner's taking money out of the business, it's going to affect their drawing account and they're taking away $4,000. So we subtract away $4,000. And again, we're gonna look at our Pat Glenn drawing account withdrawals reduce the value of our owner just like expenses so we decrease that value that gives us 27,900 in cash 1350 in supplies 600 in accounts payable 20,000 in capital 4,000 in withdrawals 20,600 in our sales commission which is our revenue 3200 in rent 2600 in salaries 1450 in auto and 700 in miscellaneous. And finally, this one's a little different. It says we determined that the cost of supplies on hand was $500, therefore the cost of supplies used was 850. So on hand means how much of the supplies we still own, meaning we haven't touched them yet, we could still sell them tomorrow if we needed to. The definition of an expense is any asset that has been used to help run and operate the business. So we've put some of our supplies to use to help run and operate the business during this period of time. Those supplies now become an expense for us and we always put in the amount that was used. So in our supplies column, we're gonna subtract away the amount that was used, not the on hand amount, the amount that was used and the amount that was used now becomes a supplies expense for us. So we do a final calculation. So we still have $27,900 in cash. We now have $500 in supplies, which represents that on hand value, 600 in liabilities, 20,000 in capital, 4,000 in withdrawals, 20,600 in our revenue for our sales commission, 3,200 in rent, 2,600 in salaries, 1,450 in an automobile expense, 850 in a supplies expense, and $700 in a miscellaneous expense. In part two, we're gonna use these values, the very bottom values that we see here, in order to complete our financial statements.